Hi, I'm Sarah Sturtz. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm going to show you how to make cheesecake. Now, a lot of people can show you how to make cheesecake. Why is what I'm showing you any different? Well, it's because I use an Instant Pot. Oh, right here, Instant Pot. This is a six quart. They come three quart. They go up to 10 quart. I have several here in Portland. This is the one I use for um, cheesecake and certainly for a lot of other dishes. If you keep kosher, no problem having one that's solely dairy, one that's solely meat. Um, that certainly is easy enough to adjust. I want to just say before I begin that uh, I started to use an Instant Pot about two years ago. I was really intrigued by the advertising, <clears throat> the simplicity. Um, I was a little bit afraid of pressure cookers. I have a great big pressure cooker that I never used. A lot of people have these things and have never taken them out of the box. Um, and then I discovered Ruth McCusker. Now Ruth McCusker, who passed away just this past February, uh, for the last two years, Ruth um, shared her recipes on a website called rudytoot.com, being named Ruth, her father, uh, years ago named her Rudy Toot, R-O-O-T-I-T-O-O-T. <clears throat> she took 45 years worth of recipes and her mother's recipes, and they were both fabulous, fabulous cooks, and converted them to be Instant Pot recipes. Her manner of teaching was so user-friendly for newbies like me and like so many others that it not only created stars in the kitchen, it has brought so many people back to cooking, men and women, who enjoy what they're doing because this is kind of fun. And this is kind of fun. It's amazing. So some of the things I've made um, in the Instant Pot, soups, chicken soup, borscht, cream of mushroom soup, minestrone, the best minestrone, Everything is outstanding. Her recipes are marvelous. Her cookbooks are only available via her website, rudytoot.com, but there are also digital versions that can be used with Kindle that uh, many of her loyal followers uh, use that we get directly from Amazon. This way I can access a recipe on my phone or use it on my iPad in the kitchen when I'm cooking or on the computer is uh, just to give me some more um, avenues of, of doing the work. So this is her Rudy Toot cheesecake. And this is one of the first recipes she ever shared with anyone. And uh, it looks like it's long, but it's not. It's basically got a crust, it's got a filler, and it's got a topping. Her recipes are incredibly flexible. You don't have this, try this. You don't have this in this size, do this and do this. You don't like that spice, leave it out. You want to add something else, put it in. Experiment. I find the recipes all very, very flexible. Right now, I'm going to start with showing you the pan I'm going to use, which is right here. They look little because they need to be little to go into this. This is a seven inch cheesecake, and this is a six inch. Now, why don't I have a seven inch? I do. And I used it last night because I'm not going to ask you to sit and wait 26 minutes and then an hour while it cools. So this is the seven inch. This is a spring form. Okay. So the bottom is here. It fits in. You tighten the spring on the side. And there you go. This one is a push pan. Okay. Push pan is kind of cool. But when you finish, and after it cools, you just put the pan on top of a can of something. The cake comes up and the sides come off. Okay, not using this little guy today. You worried about making too small a cheesecake? Make several. She has recipes for Almond Joy cheesecake, Key Lime cheesecake, Dreamsicle cheesecake, quadruple chocolate cheesecake and every other variation you can think of. That's kind of a cook that she does. So 
Here I have um, one cup, one cup, dry measure of graham cracker crumbs. I have two tablespoons of melted butter. and two teaspoons of sugar, which has already done. I'm going to mix this. I'm sure you've done this a lot of times for other recipes. Um, Ruth points out not to press it down too hard because when you go to cut it, if you've made the crust too firm, it's hard to cut into it, and that's true. Um, you don't have to put a piece of parchment on the bottom, but I'm going to. Only because it's a spring form and I'm experimenting. I like the other pan. This is already pre-cut. However, you can cut it yourself or, as I said, a skip. So the crumbs, the butter, and the sugar go into the pan like so. And I'm going to press it down initially with the fork all the way to the end. And then a little bit with my knuckles and voila we have the crust. Now this crust can be baked I think I don't know 350 for maybe seven or eight minutes. I can give you a more a specific recipe at any time um, or in the freezer which is what I'm going to do right now. And the time it takes me to um, take care of the filling, the, the uh, base will be just fine. So the filling is two eight ounce packages of cream cheese. Uh, you can even use low fat cream cheese in this. Ruth warns you to uh, warm it up. She usually puts it in um, a plastic Ziploc bag, leave the top open, put it into a bowl of hot water, bring it to room temperature, it makes it much easier um, to mix. Let's see, three quarters of a cup of sugar, which is right here, already measured out. Sugar substitutes also work well. You know, I'm not trying to say you're making a diet cheesecake. I'm just saying for those who can't have sugar, this is a good way to go. Uh, the eggs don't go in till the last minute. Half a teaspoon of vanilla, pinch of salt, pinch of salt. Let me get my salt ready. So, pinch of salt, um, and a half a, one to two teaspoons of grated lemon rind. And I think I already put it in the bowl. All right, so I'm going to start to mix this. Oh, if you can hear me over the uh, mixer. We're going to mix it until it's smooth. And we have two hands, so I need one of them to bring the sides down a little bit with the spatula. from her testing that putting the eggs in and over beating them into the uh, filling is what makes cracks on the top. I've never experimented because I take her word from it for it. I take her word for everything. Her instructions have never failed me. Um, before she passed, she was on the Facebook website uh, devoted to her recipes and to questions about the Instant Pot. And she was on there all the time and she answered wonderful questions. She had a great sense of humor. And I'll tell you, you laugh a lot. I laugh a lot when I use it. Okay, so here's the eggs. I've already checked them and I've combined them in here. So I'm gonna put in 
the two of them. There's no reason to put them in separately. <laughs> I see no more yellow, so as far as I'm concerned, that's it. Unplug this baby, move it aside. All right. So here is the filling for the cheesecake. I want to say too that if you like a denser cheesecake, her uh, pressure times are different for a creamy cheesecake versus a dense. I don't think you're ever gonna get a really dry cheesecake if you're a, a giant fan of New York style dry cheesecakes. Maybe the oven is better for that. The oven is better for some things, but <clears throat> this is perfect for dishes that can be steamed. Um, it makes the most amazing corn you ever ate in your life. Uh, just trying to think. One of my favorite recipes is a spaghetti and meatball. The meatballs can go in frozen. Frozen. You put them on the bottom. The spaghetti, which is dry, uncooked, broken in half and laid opposite, perpendicular pieces. Then a large jar of pasta sauce. Fill it up with water, large jar of water, seasonings. Close it, pressure cook it. It not only comes out with the meatballs cooked, the pasta is cooked, the spaghetti sauce is everywhere, and it's one pot. <laughs> it's just terrific. The chicken soup takes minutes to cook. Now granted, you need to know, it takes maybe 20 minutes to come up to pressure. It's cooking while it comes up to pressure. But after that, you X number of minutes for the chicken soup and it tastes like it's been cooking for hours and hours. That doesn't mean that I can't make one that cooks for hours and hours. But for taking 20 minutes, you really can't beat this. Um, banana bread, uh, bread pudding, rice pudding, uh, goulash, stuffed cabbage. Oh my goodness. Stuffed cabbage, lasagna, taco pie, Certain recipes kind of lend themselves to an instant pot better than others. Okay. Here we have our cheesecake. Our filling goes right in. You can also make a savory cheesecake, cutting back on the sugar and putting in baked salmon, you know, lox, bits, um, sun-dried tomatoes, uh, capers, you know, all sorts of different things. Look at this. This is gorgeous. Okay, so. One of the nice things about cooking during the coronavirus is your hands are always clean. Okay. All right, so I have put one and a half cups of water. Doesn't need to be cold, just water in here. This is the liner. You never, ever, ever want to cook without the liner. And you never, ever, ever want to throw water in before you put your liner in. Common mistake. So one and a half cups. I have all sorts of privets. This is a trivet that can be lifted out, but that's really only good for something that's not quite as wide as a seven inch cheesecake. So I tuck these under, put in the trivet. This keeps it up out of the water so it can steam. It goes in uncovered. I wanna show you, I have these gizmos. I have two of them for pulling pans out. Some people buy silicone, um, Gizmos with a strap so you can lift things out. So far, I've been good with just this. The cheesecake goes in here. At this point, I can't lift it up and show you where it'll dribble out. Here is the lid. 
venting and steaming. We're not going to be long enough for you to see me vent it, but I'm going to tell you about it. <laughs> this is the front. You have to look, I did it. Okay, it goes on sealing right now. When it's finished, every recipe is different, but they will be, you set it to the amount of minutes that you're going to be pressure cooking it. Then there's either a natural release, which is the pressure releases on its own, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, sometimes a natural release until it's done. Certain meats get tougher when you let them release too long. Um, then there's a quick release. You don't want to make soup and do a quick release <laughs> unless you just toggle it up and back because it's so fluid, you could get uh, lots of steam coming out of here. But here's the thing, in terms of a safety feature, this machine will not open, will not open with pressure still in it. So there's really no reason to be afraid. Once you get past that, in fact, the first thing that they recommend you do when you get an instant pot or, or another version of a machine like it is to do a water test. So you know what the steps are for closing up the machine, sealing it, putting in the uh, number of minutes and so on, <coughs> is then to wait until you let the steam out and so on. <clears throat> in this particular case, I'm setting it to seal. This pin that's up here will come up. That means it's fully pressurized. At the end of the recipe, at the end of the cooking time, at the end of the waiting time or the release, you're going to hit this to, I use this, hit this to venting and you'll see the pin drop. It will not open until the pin drops and the pin doesn't drop until the pressure is gone. So rest easy about using it, you can experiment. All right, many times people don't understand why it's not coming up to pressure. They don't have it on sealing, they have it on venting, so they better make sure they've got water still in their pot. Obviously, there are dishes that you make without putting water underneath and steaming it, like a soup. There's a saute feature. <clears throat> you can put um, ground beef, ground turkey, whatever in the bottom of the pot, saute it, add your mushrooms, add your onions, add your whatever, then put in your liquid. And um, you don't use a trivet for that. So now I've set it. You can see the front of it. It says off. I'm going to put it pressure cook on. And this is how you up and lower the minutes. In this particular case, um, I've got a 26 minutes, which is for a creamy, not a particularly dense filling. And I don't have to do anything else. That means a very little beep, beep, beep. And that means it's starting. I leave it alone. Pressure will build. And when the time comes <clears throat> that the pressure is up, the pin is up, I will, it will cook automatically for 26 minutes counting down. It beeps 10 times when it's all finished. And then I usually either set my clock here but the clock here will tell you, it has an L in front, how many minutes it's going to count up while it's releasing, either a natural release, whatever. <clears throat> Obviously, if it's a quick release, that's not the issue. You're just going to do it. But um, this is going to come up to pressure, cook for 26 minutes. I'm going to um, let it sit 15 minutes in the pot, let out all the rest of the pressure. And last night there was none because I already made one in anticipation of seeing you today. And um, this is going to be set aside. <coughs> so yesterday I made a cheesecake to show you what it was going to look like. After it came out of the machine, you leave it on the countertop an hour. It settles down. If there's a little bit of moisture on the top, you're going to just blot it with a paper towel. Then there is a topping, which is a cup of sour cream, two tablespoons of sugar, <coughs> half a teaspoon of vanilla. Smooth it on the top. That's entirely up to you. People make it without a crust. People make it with vanilla wafers. They use chocolate wafers. They use no wafers. People have used lemon cookies, depending upon the flavor they're putting together. 
And <clears throat> here's the can. Around the edge. Let's see how this tape looks. There we go. My little cheesecake. Now, what I would do probably, as soon as I'm finished here, smooth out the top a tiny bit um, and decorate it. What I would usually do right now is I would have um, Comstock blueberry pie filling, which isn't going to come from my market order until tomorrow, which is why you're not seeing it now. However, you could use <coughs> lemon curd. Ruth's lemon curd is world famous. She calls it a, a, a taste of sunshine. Um, fresh fruit, whipped cream, you name it. There's a there's hundred different ways of finishing up. My husband was very, very happy because this is a terrific cheesecake. Um, his mom made cheesecakes for years and I was kind of surprised when he tried this one and said, it's the best I've ever eaten. Um, it's different, it's creamy. It's a delicious taste. It can be frozen. What I would do if I were gonna freeze this, I would cut it probably with dental floss Okay, and put a piece of either wax paper or probably parchment in between, like when you see it, if you buy something frozen, uh, like Eli's Cheesecake from Chicago, and then you can just uh, liberate one piece at a time. It is traditional on Shavuot to make uh, dairy dishes. I come from a long line of blintz makers. Certainly, you know, I could do that but I've uh, customarily made cheesecake for friends and families. Truthfully, now that we're indoors, I like that it's a little one because I'm not faced with this giant cheesecake still in the refrigerator that you hate to. It's like Wolf says, when you put it in the refrigerator at night, it needs, it needs after it sits on the counter for an hour, it needs four hours minimum cooling. And I have told, we have 100,000 people on that, Facebook group. We just got 100,000 this past week. It's a wonderful, um, spirited, kind, gently spoken, full of laughter group. And um, we all laugh because everybody makes mistakes and we all start someplace with the first step. Um, but the cheesecake is a favorite. And I love that it's a favorite for the holiday because this, this works out well for me. So, how long have I been making cheesecakes? 50 years. Wow. How long have I been making these cheesecakes? Two years. Will I go back to the old way? What for? What for? This is a snap. Some people say <clears throat> this doesn't necessarily shave time from what you're making. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, sometimes, uh, and I try to have the prep all done. It makes it so, so much easier. Um, I can already hear it coming up to pressure. It's already doing its thing over there. Um, you don't touch up there. Anyway, I like to use, um, I like to use these for the Jewish holidays because I can have chicken soup in one, a side dish in another, a different on, an entree in the third. I have three here. Um, yeah, been making them a long time, but make, making them in the um, in the instant pot only for the last couple of years. I would I would um, <clears throat> say that if we're going to continue doing little videos of home cooking with instant pot, that anybody listening or watching this. Uh, should probably convey to someone at Shari Torah what you would like to see done, what you have an interest in, because I'm game for anything. I'll, I'll try anything. I mean, if I could make borscht, believe me, I'll try anything. Some of them are so much easier. I can use frozen chicken in my soup. It takes longer to come to pressure, but then the same amount of minutes to cook it. 
Also, you can leave it for 20 minutes, 12 minutes, whatever. Just pay attention. There's, um, I, I wrote on the Facebook page, it was, I thought it was pretty funny, so did a lot of other people, that there's a 555 recipe for making hard boiled eggs. This makes the best hard boiled eggs ever. Nothing wow. cooks, nothing falls apart, nothing comes out of its shell, and they're so easy to peel. Five minutes cooking under pressure, five minutes natural release, five minutes in a bowl of ice water. And I said that I modified my recipe to five minutes, one and a half hours, five minutes. I forgot that they were in there. They were still pretty good. They were still pretty good, but yeah, there's a lot of room for error. As I said, things are flexible. Once you learn what kind of things can pose a problem, like so uh, sauces that are too thick, Look, it's already come to pressure. We've only probably been talking a few minutes and now it's going to cook down. 26 minutes. I'm going to leave it for 15 minutes to cool. Open it. One hour on the countertop, refrigerator, and by the time it's cooled and delicious tomorrow, I'll have the blueberry topping in here. I hope that that was helpful, that you enjoyed it, and um, looking forward to, to doing this again.